It's a tough decision. When someone holds fringe or odious views, does putting a spotlight on them risk giving them a platform? As CNN recently found out, it's an even tougher calculation when that person is running for public office. When it comes to Arthur Jones, there's no question about it. The man is your run-of-the-mill neo-Nazi. To me, the Holocaust is what I said it is. It's an international extortion racket. Are whites superior to blacks? No question about it. And no further explanation needed. But Jones also happens to be a candidate for Congress, running unopposed for the GOP nomination in a reliably Democratic district near Chicago. CNN apparently couldn't resist having Jones on for a grilling by Allison Camerata. You've been part of anti-Semitic groups since the 1970s. You go to neo-Nazi rallies. We have pictures of you there. You are, were part of the White People's Party. You dress in Nazi garb and you celebrate Hitler's birthday. Okay then, but the interview continued with Jones spouting his views and waving around purported evidence that the Holocaust was a hoax. You said that you don't believe the Holocaust. records of Holocaust survivors. After six minutes of continued squabbling, Camerata tells Jones she's heard enough. You're going to be on the ballot for the March 20th primary and on the ballot for the November election. Mr. Jones. We're going to go. Well, if he couldn't win Dogcatcher, why bother talking to him in the first place? It's not just CNN. Mm. Um, I happened to catch this story a week ago in the New York Times. A lot of people have written about it. It's, it's one of those things they can't resist. And also, he is going to win the nomination. But there's no reason for a national network to give him that kind of a platform. The local news media, the local newspapers, they have to. He's a congressional candidate. But this is, this is so obvious. And... By the way, Chris Cuomo and Alison Camerona, this has kind of become de rigueur for them. They get somebody who is usually a Republican or somebody with a conservative point of view, and they, they have it out with them. That's, I, the, that's I, the regular morning fare. I, I disagree with you, Emily. I, I have a line. My line is state legislature and below. If you have crazy, offensive candidates running for the state legislature somewhere, you don't interview them. This guy is a congressional candidate. He's going to be running against an incumbent congressman this fall. I think it's perfectly appropriate to interview him. And I thought Alison Camerata did what you need to do, which is just basically call him out, bring out his views. Uh, I, I don't think he should become a regular on the cable news circuit, but uh, I think that he's running for an important enough office uh, that he ought to be so exposed. Wait, you think they did it for altruistic reasons, and not ratings. Of course, they did it for ratings. Everything, <laughs> anyway. every ratings figures into everything. Mm -hmm. But I also think that it was worth doing from a news point of view, and I thought she did a good job. I, I tend to agree with Dan and disagree with you in that <laughs> I I think that this is absolutely uh, an acceptable amount of time to to spend on it. You know, I thought Alison Cameron actually did a did a very good job compared to what we've seen in a lot of other areas of media where. You know, you've seen this in, in newspaper stories where, you know, the New York Times got criticized for doing a profile of a Nazi in Ohio where they just sort of let his Naziness lie there on the page and not aggressively <laughs> confront it. Um, I thought that she did a, a good job in doing that. I thought that it was particularly telling at the end when it would be the traditional time of the interview to say, all right, thank you for, for being with us. And she just couldn't get the words out and had to say, all right, we're, we're done here. I think there are a lot of ways that this could have been mishandled. And as Dan said, if this continues on for weeks and months, it might be different. But to me, this was a completely newsworthy interview. If I had been in charge, I wouldn't have put him on the air. Mm -hmm. and, and it has nothing to do with my personal feelings. I, every time there's a presidential campaign and we go up to New Hampshire in the, during the election cycle, you go up to New Hampshire, there are always these fringe and beyond fringe candidates who are running for president. You rarely will see them show up on the air anywhere. You will pick the best of the fringe, but you won't even go and touch some of these others that clearly are identified as crazy sometimes. It, it happens all the time. They don't get this kind of attention. And I think you just, just because someone's running for a higher office doesn't mean that you should give them but, this amount of attention but, to, to spew the kind of things that they the, did. The difference, though, is that, that, it's that he's going to get the nomination. He's run for Congress he's not multiple win. times. He doesn't have a chance of winning. He's going to win now, the primary. Well, he's, yeah, he's going to win the primary. Right. So I think you have to cover it. I, however, I don't think you have to give him six minutes on CNN. I think you could have pulled the clip from, the, from his rally. That's current. You can go 
pull another clip from a more current rally. Maybe you have two minutes if you want to say, and that's all we that's all we got here, folks. And that's enough of that because you really are giving the guy a platform, and he's just going for it because there's nothing. He's not having an exchange with you. He's just holding up all of his propaganda. Exactly. So that's my thing about it. Cover it. He's and it is a big enough office to cover, but I don't think we have to give him almost ten minutes yeah. on the air. Do you think they're giving the, the yeah. Democrat that? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs>